Hello, I'm on safari in Africa at the moment with my wife and daughter and I've just noticed a herd of elephants crossing the road up here. And I thought if we just drive slowly and give them a little time to cross the road, we should be able to investigate. They're quite noisy at the moment actually, they don't seem very happy, it's probably because of our presence here, so I think we need to be very careful here. But they're very large, they're some of the largest elephants I've seen. I'll just pull over here and we'll see how we go. Most of the elephants have moved now into the bush. But up ahead in a grassy spot, I can still see a solitary young male that's yet to clear the road. It's usual for adolescent males to leave the herd in which they grew up. As they get older and more mature, and they tend to live more isolated lives. See him raising his trunk slightly and moving it to the side? Elephants have a remarkably keen sense of smell and they're constantly testing the air for danger or in search of food and water. And that's what he was doing. After all, as far as he's concerned, we're intruders into his territory. And so he was just checking us out. He's getting closer now. He doesn't seem to be aggressive. Nevertheless, we'd better not take any risks. So we'll wait until he passes by before I get out. The elephants seem a little bit calmer now. They're also a little bit quieter, although I can hear them nearby here. But they don't sound as loud and as aggressive as what they did before when I was sitting in the car. I can just see them through the brush up here, but there's ample evidence here in this elephant dung to tell us that they've been here very recently. And just a little further up there, I can see the elephant footprints that venture off there into that bush. So let's go and have a closer look at these magnificent beasts. All nature speaks of God's unending love. All nature speaks of his care. I can see the elephants ahead through the scrub and they seem relatively settled. Hopefully they haven't picked up my presence yet because I am downwind from them but the elephants do have the ability to detect friends or foe not only through sound and scent but also through vibration receptors in their trunks and their feet. But so far, so good. I'll try and get a little closer. You know, it's when you're as close as this to wild elephants that you appreciate their immense size and potential power like never before. They're certainly a most mighty animal and the giant of the animal kingdom. Once again, we see a testimony to the creative power of the master designer. And once again, I would like to share with you some of the remarkable features of God's creation and some spiritual lessons that can be gleaned when we observe the elephant. This is Greg Evans speaking, and I'm pleased to be able to present to you another chapter in the series, Nature's Lesson Book. Hello, I'm on safari in Africa at the moment. The elephant is one of the best known and most admired of the world's wild animals. It's found in some form in most cultures across the world, if not in existence, certainly in story. It's a symbol of wisdom and power and is famed for its memory and intelligence, where it's considered to be comparable with dolphins. Aristotle described the elephant as the beast which passeth all others in wit 
and mind. There are two main types of elephant, the African and the Asian elephant. And of the two, the African is larger. It is the heaviest of all land animals. In fact, the largest ever recorded elephant was in 1956, where a male elephant weighed about 12,000 kilograms and had a shoulder height of 4.2 metres. The elephant is considered an adult at about 25 years and lived for about 70 years. Adult elephants have no natural predators. However, lions may attack calves or weak ones. Disappointingly, the elephant's greatest threat comes from human intrusion and poaching. Once numbering in the millions, the African elephant population has dwindled to hundreds of thousands. The elephant is now a protected species in most parts of the world, with restrictions in places on capture, domestic use and trade in products such as ivory which comes from the elephant's tusks. The tusks are actually its upper incisors. Tusks grow continuously and in an adult male at a rate of about 18 centimetres a year to a length of over 3 metres and they can weigh over 90 kilograms. Tusks are used to dig for water, roots and minerals, especially salt. They are also used to debark, to dig into and to move trees. In addition, they are also used for marking trees to establish territory and occasionally as weapons. Now here's an interesting point. Just as humans are usually right or left-handed, elephants are generally right or left tusked. The preferred tusk is called the master tusk and it is usually shorter and rounder at the tip from where? Tusks are mostly made of calcium phosphate. Ivory is relatively soft compared to other minerals and is so strongly favoured by artists for its carvability that it's used widely. Unfortunately, the desire for elephant ivory has been one of the major factors in the reduction of the world's elephant population. Elephants are herbivores and grasses comprise at least 50% of their diet. This is supplemented with leaves, twigs, bark and roots. Elephants also consume small amounts of bamboo and fruits, seeds and flowers where they're available. Their digestive system, however, has a low metabolic efficiency. So they need to spend up to 16 hours a day eating plant food during which time they will actually ingest between 140 and 270 kilos of food daily. Only about 40% of this food will be digested and absorbed. And the other 60% of the food will leave the elephant's body unabsorbed. In order to support its massive head and body, the elephant has legs that are like great straight pillars and large feet. This design is an intelligent one because it means that the elephant needs less muscular power to stand. Consequently, an elephant can stand for very long periods of time without tiring. So African elephants rarely lie down unless they are weak from sickness or injury. But Asian elephants often lie down. Despite its huge size, its great bulk, the elephant can move at speeds of up to 25 kilometres per hour. It can't trot or jump or gallop, but it does have two gates, walking and a form of running. But at no stage are all its feet off the ground at the same time. An elephant starts running at about eight kilometres an hour and uses this same gait at its top speed, a common name for the elephant, which was derived from its former scientific name, is pachyderm, which simply means thick skin and thick skinned they are. The skin of the elephant is about two and a half centimetres thick in most parts of the body and is extremely tough. The colour of the elephant's skin is typically grey. Of course, if the elephant is dirty from mud or dirt baths, the skin will appear to be a similar colour as the mud, often a red or brown colour. Wallowing in mud is a common and important behaviour in the elephant. It's important for socialisation, 
but the mud also acts as a sunscreen. You see, although the elephant has thick, tough skin, it's also quite sensitive, so the mud protects the skin from harsh ultraviolet radiation and acts as good skin moisturiser as well. It also aids in regulating body temperature because the elephant does have some difficulty in releasing heat through its skin because it has less of it, I suppose, in proportion to the immense size of its body. So the elephant's skin would suffer serious damage from ultraviolet light, insect bites and moisture loss if the elephant did not take regular wallowing mud baths. After wallowing, the elephant will often blow dirt on its body, which is baked on by the sun and provides a temporary protective coating. A most notable feature of the elephant, of course, is its large flapping ears, which are very important in regulating body temperature. African elephants have bigger ears than Asian elephants, probably because they live in slightly hotter climates. Asian elephants, on the other hand, live in cooler climates and so have smaller ears. The ears are made of a thin layer of a skin containing a rich network of blood vessels which is stretched over a large flat plane of cartilage. It is because of this large highly vascular surface area that the ears function in temperature regulation. When the elephant is hot, it will continually flap its ears, thereby creating a breeze. And this breeze allows the blood in the vessels of the ear to dissipate heat, sometimes as much as 12 degrees centigrade. This cooler blood is then circulated to other parts of the body to cool them. The elephant uses its ears in displays of dominance and aggression. If an elephant wants to fend off or intimidate an intruder or rival, it will extend its ears widely, giving the impression that it is larger and a more imposing beast. The ears also come into play in the breeding season. The male gives off an odour from the must gland, which are situated just behind their eyes. One elephant researcher believes that males will fan their ears in an effort to propel this elephant cologne, you could say, greater distances. Probably the most impressive characteristic of the elephant is its trunk. The trunk is truly a remarkable and specialised organ, which clearly shows the work of the master designer. It is like a combination of an elongated nose and an upper lip, and is the elephant's most important and versatile appendage. It's used in an amazing range of activities. The trunk functions as an important part of the respiratory system. It can suck up up to four litres of water at one time and blow it into its mouth for drinking or spray it onto its body to cool or clean itself. The elephant can even inhale mud and dirt into its trunk and blow it over its back and flanks as a method of, as we said before, sunscreening and insect repellent. The elephant is an excellent swimmer and its trunk also makes an excellent snorkel. The elephant's trunk is used for displays of dominance. A raised trunk can be a warning or threat, while a lowered trunk can be a sign of submission. The elephant defends itself very well by flailing its trunk at unwanted intruders or by grasping and flinging it. The elephant also relies on its trunk for its highly developed sense of smell raising the trunk up in the air and swiveling it from side to side like a periscope. It can determine the location of food or enemies and, of course, friends and relatives. It's such an amazing organ. According to zoologists, the trunk contains more than 40,000 individual muscles, and some say it's actually closer to 100,000. So it's understandable that the trunk is so powerful that it can be used as an extra limb, it can be used to uproot trees and to deliver a disabling or fatal blow to a predator. Along with its huge mass and its tusk, the trunk is used in fits of rage where it's been known to destroy villages, flatten trees and even kill villagers. It seems that sometimes the love of its power far exceeds the power of its love 
for other creatures and things. What is so amazing is that the trunk can also perform tasks that demand skill, sensitivity and dexterity. You see, the tip, which consists of one or two finger-like projections, is so sensitive and dexterous that it can be used to pluck a single blade of grass, pick individual berries or caress and pet loved ones. Elephants have quite a structured social order of life and we find that the social lives of male and female elephants are quite different. Females spend their lives in bonded family groups of mothers, daughters, sisters and aunts, the head of which is usually the eldest female called the matriarch. On the other hand, adult males live mostly solitary lives. An elephant's social life revolves around family and raising young. Females are old enough to breed at about 13 years of age and they signal their readiness to mate with special calls and odours. After a 22 month pregnancy, the mother will give birth to a calf that weighs over 100 kilos and stands over 76 centimetres tall. Young elephants have a long childhood because they are born with fewer survival instincts than most other animals and need time to be taught them from their elders. A new calf is usually the focus of the attention of the entire herd members. The calf is born nearly blind and so initially it is dependent on its trunk to discover the world around it. Virtually all members of the herd are related and they form a close-knit family group in which each member participates in the care and protection of the young. In the first few days or weeks after birth, the mother will select several full-time babysitters from the group, which will help in all aspects of raising the calf. The more babysitters, or allo mothers as they are called, that a calf has, the more free time its mother has to feed herself so she can produce sufficient milk for her calf and thereby enhance all its chances for survival. The trunk also plays an important role in many of these social interactions. You see, a herd of elephants is held together by familial relationships and companionships. Familiar elephants greet each other by entwining their trunks, much like a handshake. The trunk is used for such actions as a gesture of friendship or courtship, as well as for nurturing between mother and young. If one of the herd is sick or injured, then others will support and protect it, preventing its further deterioration or harm. If a calf has lost its mother, another female elephant will adopt it, even if it has a calf of its own. This type of behaviour is one of the many that shows that the elephant is not only powerful and caring, but it is also a very wise and intelligent animal. In fact, the elephant's brain weighs about five kilograms and is larger than any other land animal and proportionally larger than any other living creature. Evidence of the elephant's wisdom and intelligence is found in the wide variety of behaviours that the elephant exhibits. Behaviours such as grief, making music, art, play, use of tools, compassion and altruism. Now let's do a quick review. So far we've seen three notable features of the elephant. First, it appears in most cultures. Second, it's powerful, yet caring and sensitive. And third, it's wise and intelligent. Now keep those three points in mind. Over the millennia, we can see that the elephant has been a great benefit to mankind. Of more recent times, it has played a common role in zoos, circuses and entertainment because it's intelligent enough to be trained to do a variety of acts and tricks. It is still used for heavy labour in countries like Myanmar, Thailand and India for uprooting trees and moving logs. It is used as a mount for transport. It's used for tourist rides and safaris and for special ceremonial and religious occasions. In the past, trained war elephants were deployed by armies in India, China, Persia and North Africa 
as elevated mobile strategic fortresses to crush infantry and intimidate cavalry. One Roman historian wrote, elephants, frightful with their wrinkled bodies and loaded with armed men, are a hideous spectacle, dreadful beyond every form of horror. The Carthaginians of northern Africa gave the Roman its first look at the military elephant when they defeated the Romans in the Battle of Tunis in 255 BC. Then in 218 BC, Hannibal, Carthage's famous general, took around 40 elephants over the Swiss Alps as part of his legendary trek during the Second Punic Wars against Rome. Unfortunately, most of them did not survive the journey and the war. It's a point of interest that in the Battle of Raphia near Gaza in 217 BC, both the Egyptian and Syrian armies deployed war elephants. The Egyptians had 73 of the bigger elephants from Somalia, and the Syrians had 103 from India. Although it had fewer elephants, Egypt was the victor in the battle. Reference to this conflict is found in the Bible in the book of Daniel, chapter 11. And although the elephant is not mentioned, other parts of the Bible certainly allude to its existence and value in Bible lands and times. For example, King Solomon had a throne made of ivory. He also used the imagery of fine white ivory to describe the neck of a beautiful woman. Evil King Ahab built a house with ivory, and Amos writes of beds made of ivory. So ivory in ancient times was highly sought after and a symbol of wealth and extravagance. But we're actually told in the last book of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, that there will come a time when ivory loses its value. So the elephant was no stranger to the cultures of Bible lands and times, and even back in those days it was considered an animal of great power and intelligence, as well as care and sensitivity. It is here that I'm reminded of another who was revealed in the Bible and who manifests those same characteristics, but to an infinite degree. The Bible tells us that God has also appeared to all cultures and that He is powerful and that He is so intelligent that He truly knows everything. God is always present or omnipresent. He is all-knowing or omniscient and He is all-powerful or omnipotent. Describing God's omnipresence, King David asks the rhetorical question in Psalm 139 and verse 7, where can I go from your spirit? Of course, the answer is nowhere. Or where can I flee from your presence? Again, the answer is nowhere. And in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20, Jesus promises, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. His spirit is always present with us if we choose him to be. Describing God's omniscience, Job asks in chapter 37 and verse 16, Do you know how the clouds are balanced? Those wondrous works of him who is perfect in knowledge. If God is perfect in knowledge, then he knows everything. And St. John writes in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 20, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Describing God's omnipotence, John writes that all in heaven exclaim in Revelation 19 and verse 6, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. That is, God is all-powerful. And in Matthew 19 and verse 26, we read, But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. God has the power to speak the world into existence. He has the power to calm the seas and silence the winds. He has the power even to raise people from the grave. And here's an important point. Whereas it seems that the elephant's love of its power sometimes outweighs the power of its love for others, especially when it exhibits its behavior of senseless rage, that is never seen 
in the case of God. You see, the power of God's love for you and for me always outweighs the love of his power. That's a significant difference. Friend, wouldn't you like to have someone like that feature in your life? To guide and advise you? To help fix up whatever mess you might have in your life? You can, friend, simply by choosing to get to know your Creator God. All nature speaks of God's unending love The seas and the hills, the flowers so rare The sunshine, glad and refreshing rain Remind us of God's loving care all nature speaks of his care. The elephant is certainly a majestic animal. With its long, strong limbs and its muscular trunk, it's a most powerful animal. And it can use that power to do good or to be destructive. It can use that power to sustain and maintain its life. It can use that power to provide and to protect or it can use that power to be destructive. We've traveled throughout parts of Africa and wherever there have been elephants, we've also seen trees which have been, it would seem, for no reason, pushed over. We've even seen power poles pushed over. I don't know if that's just a test of their strength or for what reason it has been done, but it is for the good that the elephant is best using its power. Our Creator God is all-powerful. He created the elephant out of nothing, ex nihilo. He provides with His power. He protects us with His power. And He teaches us. He gives us all authority. He gives us all power to do good to each other, to show love and to show care, the same love and care that God has for us. We have the power and the authority to show others as well. Let's use that authority. Let's use that power which God has given us to make our life a more abundant life, to be more relational and loving and caring with others. In short, to do good for others. All nature speaks of God's unending love The seas and the hills, the flowers so rare The sunshine glad and refreshing rain Remind us of God's loving care All nature speaks of His care